Hi everyone, this is John. Uh, today in this video we're going to cover uh, reserved subdomains. And so by default, uh, each tunnel in Packet Riot is assigned uh, a, a randomized domain name. Um, we usually just um, generate a haiku like Delicate Pine, similar to some other systems like, uh, like Docker um, and Heroku. And this just allows us to create um, a random but kind of humanly readable name for your tunnel. Um, it's not one that you could easily commit to memory. Uh, and so to help with, uh, with, with using or defining a domain name that, that is uh, simple to remember, uh, we have the ability to um, uh, reserve and specify uh, a subdomain using one of the domains that we own. Uh, let me first uh, state that this is a feature that's available to subscribers. Um, but it allows you to create you know, several subdomains that will be simple to remember, and we have um, many domains that you can choose. Uh, and so uh, in the last video, we set up a Plex server. And so um, I'm looking to create a subdomain uh, that I could use that's easy to remember to access my Plex server. And so in this video, we'll just um, walk through how you go about reserving a subdomain and then how do we update our rules in our packet write tunnel um, to use uh, that subdomain and then also we'll make an update to Plex as well. And so we'll, we'll first start by logging into your account on packetriot.com. Um, now this is a subscriber feature and so you'll need to um, have at least a basic plan to try this out. Um, we have several domains um, that we uh, own that we use for um, providing uh, these customized subdomains. And so I'm going to uh, create two uh, uh, subdomains uh, in this video. I'll use mediastreamer.app, which is, um, you know, fits fits our use case pretty well. And I'll, I'll hope that Demoplex is available. And it is. And then I'll create another um, domain as well. And I'll call that demo-plex as well. Okay, so they're both available. Uh, and so let me kind of switch back to my tunnels. And you could see that my one tunnel, um, Delicate Pine, is, uh, is currently running. And uh, this is the tunnel that we're using, um, that we're hosting here in our Docker for Windows environment. And so um, what I want to do is I want to use uh, the two subdomains I just reserved, and I want to use them for some applications or some servers that I'm hosting behind this tunnel. And so we'll click back on the subdomains page and you'll see that below um, in the second table, we actually have all the subdomains that we've reserved. And there's this drop down that allows us to assign this domain to a specific tunnel. And so what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll assign demo-plex.packetright.net to delicate pine and save that. And so what this does in the background is that it actually creates um, the correct uh, uh, DNS records so that this domain will actually resolve to, to this domain. And uh, a, 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 a certain kind of record called the CNAME record is what is what we create to uh, create this, this alias. And so we'll do the same with the mediastreamer.app domain. And so now um, if, if we want to uh, basically uh, ping this domain, we'll get the exact same uh, host as this domain. And so let's just try that out real quick. Um, we'll just open up a terminal here. And so this is this is resolving to uh, to to 138.197.66.62. And let's just go to um, our tunnel here. And let's just ping that. And so this is looking correct. Uh, and so now we need to create rules that use these two um, that use these two subdomains. So we'll switch over to our uh, our Docker for Windows. And so in Docker for Windows, they do have a neat feature here. You can click this button to open up a command line. But this is using the older um, the older command uh, shell, which uh, isn't nearly as nice to use as this. So what I'll do is I'll just use um, Microsoft Terminal um, to uh, create a shell into the, um, the packet write container here. And so the name of this container is packet write. So, so we will use that and we'll create a small shell. 
So the first thing I'll do is just list um, all the information about the tunnel. And you'll see that right now we just have, we have two rules. We have one rule that um, is using the host name that was assigned to our tunnel. Um, and it's forwarding over to um, the Plex container um, uh, on port 32400. And we have a TCP port that we allocated earlier and it's doing the same thing. And so what I'd like to do is add um, these two new domains um, that I reserved um, to, uh, to, to my packet ride client. So then I could, um, I could use these domains uh, in a web browser and, uh, and access my Plex server that way. Uh, so let me uh, switch back over here. And I'll just copy this. And we're going to do the same for the other domain. And what these commands are going to do, um, like all commands that we, um, all traffic rules that we set up in a packet ride client, is that when the client connects to its server, um, it's going to request um, HTTP and HTTPS traffic for these domains, right? And so uh, in the case of custom reserved domains, that server is going to speak to packetride.com and just make sure that, that these domains were reserved by you um, and that you're a subscriber and that you can, um, you, can, you can choose these custom subdomains. And then once that's negotiated and figured out, then it will begin to uh, uh, you know, route this traffic to your tunnel um, once it starts receiving requests. So, um, so now that that's done, we'll just print out um, all of our rules and you'll see we have these two new ones. And so uh, what we can do is um, restart our packet riot container. And so this is always necessary. Uh, the client program isn't able to dynamically um, discover these kinds of changes. And so we just need to restart it and we can kind of check and see um, the output of the uh, packet ride container. You could see that now, um, now we have two new rules that were um, that were added and requested. And so, if we uh, go into our browser here, we can just try out that domain, and then you'll see that it is being routed now to um, to our Plex server. Now, one thing that uh, Okay, so let's just uh, log into our Plex account. But uh, one thing that um, we do need to change, um, this is sort of a caveat for Plex, is that uh, you want to be able to um, uh, set inside of Plex um, the URLs that we just, uh, that we intend to use, right, for our Plex server. Um, and so there's a section here that's called custom server access URLs. And so I'm going to add um, these two new ones. And what's going to happen with this is that, um, this is, this is, um, this is, uh, the Plex, um, this is the Plex media server that you're running along with your Plex account, associating these servers with your, with your account. So when you set up like your mobile app, um, you know, you'll be able to, um, it'll, it'll know that these are the servers or these are the URLs that you could use for the servers that you connect to. Um, and I'll kind of just sort of finish this here by adding this, uh, this last URL and, uh, it will, it will work. Um, it will work when you're inside a web browser, but when you're actually using mobile phone, these are actually very critical, um, changes to add. So I'll just save these. Um, and we'll just go ahead and try out the, uh, the second URL that we had set up, which was, uh, the media streamer. And as you can see, uh, this is working, um, this is working just like the other one. So I uh, just wanted to walk through and uh, show you all um, uh, custom subdomains. Uh, this is, you know, it's, it's, it's available if you're a subscriber, uh, but it allows you to, to, to reserve, you know, custom domains, um, custom subdomains that are just easy to remember. Uh, it can definitely help you um, with uh, if you, if you don't want to purchase your own custom domain and uh, it allows you uh, some flexibility with, you know, creating a name that's going to be representative of the application that you're hosting. And so I hope that uh, this video walkthrough was uh, helpful. Um, we're going to be covering custom subdomains in the next video and uh, showing you how to um, set up a custom subdomain and uh, create some rules and then also enable Let's Encrypt, which is built into our client and makes um, setting up end-to-end -end encryption really simple um, 
and very easy to maintain since it automatically takes care of uh, updating your certificates. And so uh, thanks for checking out this video. Please leave any comments or uh, any uh, requests uh, below. Uh, thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.